Good afternoon, this is Ian Charles here of Wizards. I'm here with Chris Cumley. We're here today to talk to you about a, um, give a brief introduction to, uh, to, to, to VoIP. Uh, perhaps it would be useful if, uh, Chris, if you gave us, tell us what the letters stand for. Voip, uh, voice over IP, where IP stands for Internet Protocol. Right, right. And what, does, what function does this perform in its, its basis form? Basically, um, whereas traditionally telephones have taken your voice sound and translated it into electronic signals that are sent over a dedicated piece of wire, yep. um, or latterly using ISDN encoded into a digital form but still sent over a, a phone line dedicated to the task, right. um, now that's all old-fashioned, now we turn it into a digital signal that is encoded onto the same sort of internet protocol that you use for web browsing, email, file transfer, and it's sent over your internet connection. Cool. Okay, so we have here a couple of uh, a couple of um, uh, IP IP enabled phones. Um, now, if it, in my, in layman's terms, these are practically very uh, very low power computers, aren't they? They are computers. Um, they obviously do quite a bit of work under the hood. Uh, but I think the important thing is to observe that they just look like very ordinary business desk telephones. Yep. Um, there's nothing that tells the user that this is connected to anything different than they've been using for the last 20 years. So traditional uh, pick the phone up, dial tone, curly cord, uh, touch tone, uh, uh, touch, touch dial, touch dial uh, interface. Yeah, and a few other buttons like volume and um, speakerphone mode, uh, headset mode. This one's got a little wired headset attached. Uh, this is a slightly posher one, has a touch screen. This one just has a good old fashioned screen that tells you who you're talking to, um, whether or not you've got a voicemail waiting, stuff like that, which uh, again, nothing really new there. Okay, so what are the, ma what, why sh what are the main advantages of, of using VoIP? What, what does it deliver that traditional phone lines don't? Um, well, for one thing, traditional phone lines are going to go away. Right. Um, BT have told us that they plan to withdraw ISDN by 2025. Right. Now, I know that's still seven years away. Uh, so you don't have to rush out and buy one of these tomorrow. We'd like it if you did. But we would like it if you did. But um, you really need to start planning for how you're going to replace any phone system that uses ISDN with something that doesn't uh, sometime in the next four or five years. Okay, so there's that there's that um, imperative that's being driven by that's being driven by by, by the provider. Yeah. Um, how much of the uh, how much of the of the how much telephony is VoIP now? <laughs> it's a tricky question. Um, it, it, under the hood, BT have been using VoIP now for quite some time. So when your f phone call, even on an ordinary old-fashioned phone line, yep. reaches the telephone exchange, um, if you've then asked to be put through to, say, um, a colleague in Australia or your auntie in America, um, between BT's exchanges and the far end, it will be voice over IP. Right. But that's all hidden from you. What that's doing is now spreading out from the central system to the whole system. So it's about a least cost routing and, yeah. and, and, and driving down the costs. So how do these compare cost-wise to, uh, to, to a traditional phone system? Uh, remarkably similar in terms of the cost of the handsets on the desk. Yeah. Um, although one of the interesting things is a lot of people are now doing away with the handsets and just plugging a headset into their computer and using what we call a soft phone. Um, but the infrastructure costs of the sort of the box on the wall in the cupboard under the stairs or however your phone system is set up, um, those are going down. Right. Um, increasingly now people are going for what's called a hosted system, which is where the box on the wall isn't even in your office. It's somewhere out there in the cloud, if I may right. use the modern trendy terminate terminology. So in a data centre, an unknown point. Yeah, somewhere. you don't need to know where it is. Yeah. You just need to know it's big and looked after by people who know what they're doing and has generators and batteries and other redundancies to ensure that it always works. Okay, so in the event that you uh, that you lose your internet connection, what, ha what happens then? Do I lose my phone service? Well, you do, but it's not as crazy as it sounds um, because these days um, you can arrange for your incoming calls to be diverted to something else. So yes, your mobile phone, which you may have your calls routing to anyway. Modern phone systems allow you to have your incoming calls connected to your desk, to your mobile, to your home phone, wherever you want to work. Um, outgoing calls, you can increasingly use mobiles and stuff like that. I have to say, um, in the time that we've been putting voice over IP systems in for business users, um, the number of times we've actually had to implement this sort of diversion very, very, very slim indeed. Um, uh, you, you do need to bear it in mind, though. Um, 
Some people keep an ISDN line as a backup service. Obviously, until 2025, that remains a possibility, and we can mix and match voice over IP and ISDN on the same systems. Mm -hmm. Other people just assume that if it does go wrong, that's fine. We'll flip to using incoming calls to the mobiles or something for the half hour or two days or whatever it takes BT to fix the broadband. Or the, or the flood in your office to be, uh, or, to, to be dealt with. Or you've moved into a new office or what have you. And that's also very easy to do with voice over IP systems, by the way. The, the re, re, removing the infrastructure is very easy. So you can also pick it and we assume that, you, that you've taken your laptop home with you. You simply uh, plug the laptop, laptop in at home and yep. you're set up to make calls, make and receive calls as you will be were you in the office. Yeah, I mean, you should consider how your phone system works as part of your business continuity and disaster recovery planning. Mm -hmm. um, um, but voice over IP puts a lot more tools in your box for handling unexpected, well, it shouldn't be unexpected if you've planned for it, but you know what I mean. Absolutely. Incidents you prefer not to have happened, but Absolutely. have happened, you've I dealt with them, you're still getting your phone calls, your customers are still connected, you can still get hold of suppliers. Acts of God, etc. Yeah, him, yes. Absolutely. So, um, well, I mean, we're, we're all familiar with VoIP, I mean, it's a, bit, it's a proud history with people like Skype. Um, some pretty dodgy quality among the uh, among some, some of those uh, services how do, how, how, do we, how do we compare with that uh, Skype especially if you're just using the ordinary basic sort of domestic uh, user service the original Skype if you like uh, is um, a fairly low standard um, Skype for business which is what Microsoft call it now they've bought it and souped it up um, is actually a different beast yep um, Skype for Business is a lot better quality, but Skype for Business is basically a VoIP system and along this line. So effectively what we have here is a business quality, industrial standard, industrial strength system. Absolutely. The, the sound quality you get from these phones is at least as good as you've had for the last 20 years over ISDN. Right. And in fact, at the very basic level, the codec, which is the code that the phone uses to turn your voice into digital signals to send over the internet, it's the same codec that we use most of the time on these systems as you've been using on ISDN anyway. Codec? Or better. Coder, in, or coder decoder. Right. Basically just a little piece of software which either translates sound into digital signals or takes digital signals in and recreates the sound. So to be, so that means that this is a, these are little computers that essentially uh, essentially send, uh, digitize your uh, or order your speech into, into packets, send it down the line and at the far end reassemble them in the correct order. Yeah, so that you can understand what's being said to you. Absolutely, absolutely. So what do we, um, I mean, the, 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 we all want um, uh, feature-driven phones. I mean, we're not going to Facebook over these, uh, over these phones, but we're certainly with a, with a business, quality, uh, uh, business quality service. Um, what about things like voicemail called transfer, uh, um, conferencing, call recording? Pretty much all of those features, all of the features that you might expect to find on any phone system, any features that customers generally say, well, these are the things we need it to do, please, yep. are pretty much all not only present in the system, but they're included as standard. You know, we're just replacing a system for one customer where they've got half a dozen different bolt-on extra boxes. So as well as the main phone system, they've got another box that does call recording, another box that does call logging, etc. It's all now included in the system and usually as part of the base price. There are one or two fancy features that are an optional extra, um, but for the most part, for most businesses, those don't apply. The basic system does everything you can want. Okay, we're, we are going to talk about uh, video calling is also uh, something we're going to talk about, though not necessarily in this in, in this video, but certainly that is an option among some of the uh, uh, so, so some of the systems that we resell. So you can make and receive video calls from your laptop uh, to a to, to a mobile, uh, to and from mobiles, and so on. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, well, the, the the main the main focus on these, of course, is is the availability of the service. It's the capacity to make uh, to make calls, and it's also driven by cost. Um, we're, we're talking here about uh, about a, a major cost. How do the costs compare of uh, cost of ownership? Um, incredibly cheap compared to what people are perhaps used to. Um, I was surprised to speak to somebody um, a year or so ago who was running an old Meridian system. Um, he had something like 20 or 25 desks, um, and once a month he would scour eBay to see if he could pick up um, desk systems, desk sets, um, that were people were selling off as they phased their systems out, because the ones he had kept breaking, and basically 
he was trying to maintain the system as cheaply as he could. Right. Um, but when we sat down and chatted about it, basically his original system had cost him something like twenty thousand pounds. Right. Um, and um, okay, several years before, but it just hadn't occurred to him that modern systems are way cheaper. Um, and in the end, it turned out he could replace his entire system for about three thousand pounds compared to the twenty that he paid earlier. And, um, lo- and lower core costs. Uh, core costs. Definitely lower, um, and often included in the in the bundle. But even if they're not, um, voice over IP calls, lots cheaper than than traditional dialed over the old phone network, what we call POTS or plain old telephone yep. system. Yep, yep. Um, PSTN. And, uh, yep, and uh, yeah. So um, savings and calls, savings in the system. Total cost of ownership is massively reduced. Um, you generally don't have to pay for the same sort of annual maintenance contracts as well as you've had with traditional phone systems right. that, that occupy sort of half the basement. And and what about things like ease of use, moves, ads and changes, that sort of thing? Pretty straightforward. Um, plugging a new phone in, very quick and easy. Um, we've done another little video that shows how to plug this phone in. You'll find the link at the bottom of the YouTube page, I'm sure. Um, uh, then all you need to do is create the extension on the user interface, which is um, Windows-based. Right. It's all done through a web GUI. Um, it's all very well thought out so that you know when a button says it'll do something, that's what it does. Uh, but you don't have to do it yourself. If you prefer to have us set up your users and plug the phones in, that's something we generally do. Unified comms? Uh, it's, it's very much a buzzword, but it's certainly coming. So yes, the system will let you do voice phone calls, it will set, let you set up conference calls, it will let you set up uh, video conferencing connections, um, including things like shared whiteboard, sharing files on your desktops and stuff like that. Right. Um, and you can mix and match doing it between the desk phones, mobiles, tablets, on your computer. It, 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 it's all in the mix and it's all fairly smooth and straightforward to deal with. Voicemail to email? Voicemail to email is fairly common, right. so instead of having to dial into your voicemail like you do on the phone and tap in codes to get into your mailbox and tell it which message to retrieve and stuff, you just get a bing in your email and a message comes up saying you've got a voicemail and maybe it comes up with the voicemail attached as a WAV so you can just play it on the speakers of your laptop. And what about um, things like hunt groups? I mean, there's a, you know, where you've got a, a departmental phone. How does that work? Uh, all sorts of different options, but yes, a hunt group basically is when you set up uh, an incoming call to ring multiple phones. Uh, so it could be, say, the sales department. Your sales incoming number might ring every phone in the sales department, and whoever answers it first gets it. <laughs> or it might ring one phone, and then if nobody answers that, it'll go on to another one. You can set it up to suit your requirement. And what about numbers? I mean, you mentioned uh, sales number there. I mean, uh, you're clearly you're attached to those. You've publicised them. People have got them written down. Yeah, numbers, numbers, numbers are easy these days. Um, you can have as many as you need. Right. Um, it used to be quite complicated to add phone numbers to a, a traditional system. Mm-hmm. Um, these days, we generally start off with at least one number for each user. So you can set those up as a direct dial, which you can then use. Each user can publish or not as their choice, or as a company policy choice. Um, but you can then have numbers for departments, numbers for different services. Some people set up a different number when they're running an advertising campaign. Right. Um, uh, if you've got existing numbers on PSTN or ISDN phone lines, they are yours. You get to keep them. We can transfer those onto the new service. It is important to notice, don't cancel the phone lines until we've rescued the numbers. You took the words right out of my mouth. That is absolutely imperative. You do it's, not cancel anything until... Yeah, it's very important. We'll say it again. Don't cancel any phone lines until you've rescued the numbers. If you want to keep the numbers, that must happen first. Okay. So VoIP offers considerable uh, advantages in terms of, uh, in terms of cost, of, cost of ownership, uh, realistic life, your functionality, ease of use, etc., etc. Yeah. Okay. And just on numbers and cost, um, if you've got ISDN phones at the moment, BT are charging you for each number each month. It's not a huge amount of money, but it soon adds up if, as one of our customers has 600 numbers, and we're saving them quite a lot of money by moving those numbers across to the uh, to the voice over IP system where you don't charge for the numbers. 17p a minute per month, ring. Uh, sorry, 17p, 17p per, per, number. M- m- per number per month. Yeah, over 600 yeah. numbers. It's, so, you know, it's not millions of quid, but, you know, when you're trying to save money, cutting costs for things you don't need to pay as opposed to having to decide what services to do without is definitely a plus. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thanks very much. I think we're done here. Thank you.